what other components and related factors are critical in these heat pump systems? I think yeah, that's the a, compressor. Yeah. That's a really good question, and I'm going to highlight that on a slide. <laughs> uh, so give me just a second. Okay, let me know when my screen comes up again. Yeah. There's a, and this is uh, also tied to the question earlier on why are we focused on district energy systems today? So hiding that. And then advancing this. All right, so the optimal solution for an oil-free based heat pump system, and this can be true for individual buildings as well, but it's more common in district energy systems, is based on having a lower heating return water temperature. A lower heating return water temperature enables us to utilize the different compress optimized compressor technologies for that low stage and then the high stage. That in turn means a more efficient heat pump system. With the ultimate system shown uh, on the next slide of the series series counterflow or the series series counterflow cascade that I showed earlier as well. But how you enable, to answer the question, how you enable that lower district heating return water temperature is, uh, this is the supply side. We're, we're the supply side, right? Because we're supplying the heating to the district heating system. On the demand side, on the building side, and this is the exact same phenomenon that you see in cooling applications, you know, going to, you know, every chiller is a heat pump, every heat pump is a chiller, and getting that mindset is critical because the same factors apply on the heating as well as the cooling, especially as you electrify the heating. And that is specifically enabling the benefits of the variable speed drive that you're implementing on that uh, heating system, uh, on the hydronic system, how you enable that benefit. And what I mean by that is uh, those hydronic systems were designed for three-way valve systems, which were in turn designed for constant speed pumping systems. If you apply a variable speed pumping system to a uh, three-way valve-based demand side system, then you're not going to get any of the benefit from that variable speed drive because you're just bypassing all the flow around that three-way valve and maintaining the same flow of the system. So implementing pressure-independent control valves, two-way valves, to throttle that flow associated with the demand-side load becomes very critical. Along with that, uh, efficient heat transfer stations as opposed to uh, heat transfer stations in that district energy system that were applied 20 years ago. You know, same thing again on the cooling side. Those rooftop units or uh, those air handling units or those fan coil units, I think is a better analogy, that were applied 20 or 30 years ago aren't very efficient at heat transfer anymore. Same thing with the district energy system and the heat transfer station. So that heat exchanger that's applied to these, along with the pressure independent control valves, are what enables that lower district heating return temperature. In turn, what enables a more efficient series-series uh, counterflow or parallel series counterflow heat pump-based system. 